Kraft presents the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> yeah. Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Kraft brings you the Great Gildersleeve every week at this time, written by John Whedon and Sam Moore, music by Claude Sweeten. the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. When you ladies finish baking those light, fluffy biscuits and those crust brown dinner rolls the whole family loves, here's how to serve them in grand style. While they're still fresh and piping hot, pop them open and spread with delicious parquet margarine. Mmm, man, oh man, what flavor. Yes, parquet's fresh, delicate flavor adds a crowning touch that's sure to make any baking treat downright delicious eating. Parquet is a favorite spread for bread, hot toast, and rolls. For pancakes and waffles, too, in millions of American homes. And it's a fine energy food, too, one of the very best you can serve. What's more, Kraft fortifies parquet so that every pound contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. So for delicious, satisfying flavor, and for good nutrition, too, serve parquet as often as you can. Tomorrow, ask your dealer for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Yes, Kraft makes parquet. <laughs> now let's join our friend the Great Gildersleeve. It's three weeks since his dismissal as Summerfield's water commissioner. The development of his friend Fibber McGee's plastic mousetrap has been stymied temporarily for lack of capital, and Gildersleeve's affairs appear to be at a standstill. However, he still likes to eat, as we see now, joining him at breakfast with his family. Uh, pass the syrup, will you please, my boy? Here. More hot cakes, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, but not too many, Bertie. Say, uh, three or four, huh? How about you, Marjorie? No, thanks. I think you and Leroy are disgusting. Disgusting? Why, <laughs> we're just healthy, my dear. Well, I'll fix one more batch, and that'll have to hold you. All right, Bertie. Oh, Mr. Gilsleeve, I wonder could you give me some money for the grocery bill? The man asked for it yesterday, but you was out. What does he want money now for? Tell him I'll pay him the bill in the usual way. I told him that, but he wants it now. Why? Why in the name of why? Well, I'll tell you how it was, Mr. Gilsleeve. Man came in yesterday afternoon, and he says to me, Hi, he says, is the boss home? No, he ain't, I says. And he says... Well, when he gets home, you ask him for this 1843 that's due on the groceries, he says. Yes, Bertie. So I says to him, how come, I says. And he says, Mr. Gilsleeve ain't working now, he says, and I can't afford to take no chances, he says. Chances, I said. Look here, man. You ain't take no chances on Mr. Gilsleeve, I says. Why, he ain't paid me my salary for two weeks, I says. And I ain't one bit worried. He said, oh, my goodness. <laughs> I sure told him, didn't I, Mr. Gilsleeve? You sure told him, Bertie. But he still wants his money. Well, I'm sorry about your salary, Bertie. It's strictly an oversight. Here. Oh. A <laughs> uh, little short. <laughs> well, here's one week anyway, Bertie. Oh, thank you, sir. If that's one of your friends, Leroy, have him wait outside till we finish breakfast. I won't have him watching every forkful I put in my mouth. Oh, it might be Piggy. I'll go see. The darn kids. Why don't they stay home? Maybe if it's I... the grocery man. If it is, he can go right back. And who is it, Leroy? It's a lady, Unc. Here's her card. Oh? Uh, Miss Gladys Wheeler, real estate. What does she want? How should I know? Well, ask her to come in. Okay. She ain't bad looking. Isn't Leroy horrible? No, he's not. He's... Well, he's growing up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> come in, Miss Wheeler. Come in. Sit down. Have some hotcakes. Have some coffee. Oh, no, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm an awful pest interrupting your breakfast. I'd be glad to wait outside until you're through. No, no. i finished, as a matter of fact. Uh, sit down. Uh, this is my niece, Marjorie. How do you do? How do you do? And my nephew, Leroy. How do you do, Leroy? Say, how do you do, Leroy? Okay, how do you do? <laughs> Gosh, I let her in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great kid. Uh, 
What can I do for you, Miss Wheeler? Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, I wonder if you've ever considered selling your house. Selling my house? No, I never had. I don't think I'd be interested. Oh, I don't blame you, I must say. Such a lovely home. Still, I have a client who's authorized me to offer you $12,000 for it. 12000 bucks? Leroy. But Uncle Mort, it only costs 7000 oh, You children leave the room, please. Uh, Miss Wheeler and I are talking business, and you don't know anything about it. I know the house cost 7000 originally, Mr. Gildersleeve. Still, my client is willing to pay twelve. Uh, cash? Cash. Grab it, Uncle. Leroy. <laughs> Uh, Miss Wheeler, I wonder if you'd like to see the rest of our house. The dining room is no place to discuss business. And here we are back in our living room. I guess you've seen everything in our humble abode. Oh, it's all so nice and homey. Oh, yes, but I've been thinking of making a change. Man ought to move once in a while. Then you'll be dropping in at my office this afternoon to sign the contract. Oh, yes, I'll be there. Honestly, Mr. Gildersleeve, it's a pleasure to do business with a man who knows his own mind. <laughs> well, I've always liked to make decisions quickly. Bingo, that's me. <laughs> I'll bet you're a wonderful executive. Oh, you think so? Well, most men would have to consult their wives. Haven't got one. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, no, sir. Put loose and fancy free, full of beans, and will I make my own decision? <laughs> well, at least most men would have to consult lawyers, and goodness knows who. Why should I pay my lawyer a fee on such a simple deal as this? <laughs> The old goat, he'll be surprised. Mr. Gildersleeve, as I said before, it's a pleasure to do business with you. Well, it's the same to you, Miss Wheeler. Uh, say, uh, do you ever like to, uh, uh... Do I like to what? Uh, let it go. I'll be in your office this afternoon. <laughs> well, that's fine. Thanks, Miss Gildersleeve. Oh, thank you. Goodbye, Miss Wheeler. Goodbye. Yeah. By George, she's so cute it's a shame to take advantage of her. Still, it's not her money. What's that? Hey, uh, Uncle, are you going to sell a house, huh? Are uh, we going to move? Well, I agreed to sell it, my boy. I'll sign the papers this afternoon. Hear me! Hey, Mike, we're going to move! Leroy. Bernie, we're going to move! Leroy. Hey. Subside, please, Leroy. Of course, you understand you children will have to give your consent. I'm only the trustee. Well, I'll okay the deal. Leroy, what were you hollering just now? Uncle, selling the house, Bertie. We're going to move. Isn't that swell? My, my. Is it true, Uncle? Are you really going to sell it? If you approve, my dear, the house really belongs to you and Leroy. Oh, sell it. Sell it and buy a new one. I know just the house. Well, maybe we ought to talk about it a little. I hope you realize your uncle is making a pretty smart deal. Oh, sure. You know, I ought to go into the real estate business myself. It's a lot easier than I thought. Yeah, all you do is you buy a house for $7,000 and sell it for twelve. <laughs> well, the whole trick, my boy, is to know values. Know values and make decisions quickly. If I'd been the kind of a man that fools around, can't make up his mind, she might have bought some other house. I told you to grab it, Unc. Sure, but what do you know? I know how much is seven from twelve. Are you sure? <laughs> no, children. Uh, Uncle Mort, could we buy the Weston's house? It's not very big, but it's cute. Oh, yes, it's a nice house. Very nice. <laughs> it has two bathrooms. I get awfully sick of waiting for you to finish shaving every morning. What about me hanging around where you take those bubble baths? <laughs> I do not take bubble baths. You took one last week. You left a lot of bubbles in the tub, too. I did not. You did so. If that will do, children. The Western house might be very nice, Marjorie. Probably get it for 6000 maybe five. Or how about something out in that new subdivision? Oh, I'd love to live in Shady Oaks. The houses are all new out there. The kitchens are nice out there, too. Post-war style. Oh, the Nielsens have a lovely English cottage out there. Two bedrooms and three bathrooms. Only two bedrooms? Oh, Bertie would love the kitchen. Yeah, I'd love it, but I wouldn't want to sleep in it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm going to sleep in the bathroom, either. Yes. We'll need something a little bigger than two bedrooms, Marjorie. But don't worry, there are dozens of houses in town that'll be fine for us. Let's get a great big house. Uh, we don't need a mansion, my boy. As long as there's plenty of bathrooms. It'll be wonderful to have a house with a powder room. A uh, powder room? Every house in Hollywood has a powder room and a rumpus room. Wouldn't you like a rumpus room, Uncle Mort? Why not? Yeah, let's have a rumpus room. If I'm going to clean all these rooms, I hope there's a restroom. <laughs> No, 
Don't worry, Bertie. Good times are coming. You know, ever since that real estate woman walked in here this morning, I felt that everything was going to be fine. I'll take this money, we'll buy a new house, then I'll put the rest of it in mousetraps, and pretty soon I'll be a millionaire. And when I'm a millionaire, Marjorie will have two bathrooms all to herself, Leroy will have a baseball diamond and a running track, and I'll have a rumpus room with a snack bar. And Bertie, you'll have an assistant. Mr. Gilfrey! <laughs> Yeah. Don't laugh, Bertie. It could happen. <laughs> this is just a standard form sale contract, Mr. Gildersleeve. It provides that you vacate your house within 30 days. 30 days? Well, that's customary. Oh, but of course, I don't have to tell you. I can see you've had real estate dealings before. Oh, yes. Plenty of them. <laughs> Would you care to use my pen or... Uh, maybe I ought to just glance through the rest of this. Oh, by all means, take your time. Oh, thank you. You're a smart girl, Miss Wheeler. Not like an ordinary agent rushing a fellow into something. Where do I sign? <laughs> right here. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, Throckmorton P. Uh, Gilder, please. Mm, and the duplicate copy. That's the one I keep. That's right. Rock. Oh, <laughs> pen's gone dry. Oh, sorry. Here's another one. Oh, wonderful. Two pens. Well, <laughs> Rock, Martin, P. Uh, Giller, please. Thank you. That does it. Yes, sir. Well, I have a feeling we ought to celebrate a little. Come on out and I'll buy you a soda. Oh, I'd love to, Mr. Gildersee, but I've got a customer waiting over on the other side of town. Some other time. All right, some other time. Before you go, Miss Wheeler, it's been such a pleasure doing business with you. Yes? I'd like to throw a little business your way. Oh, really? Well, you call me. Oh, I don't have to call you. I just want you to find me a house. Something around five or six thousand dollars. Oh. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve. What do you mean? Don't you want my business? Well, yes, but... Well, the fact is there isn't a single house available in Summerfield. Uh, what? Unless you'd be interested in something around twenty or twenty-five thousand. What? Give me back that contract. Now, Mr. Gildersleeve, that would hardly be fair to my client, would it? Fair? What's being fair about it to me? You swindle me out of my house for half what it's worth, and all the time you know I won't have anywhere to go. You know where you can go, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> oh, why, George, if you... Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. If you like piping hot toast, pancakes, or waffles, try spreading them with delicious parquet margarine and see what appetizing goodness the delicate, satisfying flavor of parquet adds to these tempting breakfast treats. If you carry a lunch to work or to school, you'll be glad to know that parquet margarine is one of the finest energy foods you can spread on bread or in sandwiches. And if you, Mrs. Homemaker, are concerned about good family nutrition, as we know you are, you especially will want to know this important fact. Kraft fortifies parquet margarine so that every pound contains 9,000 units of vitamin A. Yes, it's good to know that there is such an economical, nourishing spread for bread with such delicious flavor and such dependable Kraft quality. So be sure to ask for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. Only two ration points a pound. And remember, Kraft makes parquet. <laughs> Let's get back to the great Gildersleeve, who's really painted himself into a corner. Having sold his own house for a good price, he can't find another to move into at any price. He's tried every real estate agent in town, examined the classified ads, and now at his wit's end, he's taken time out to get a haircut and think it over. So we find him in the hands of Floyd Munson, wedged into a barber chair, strangled by a mussy sheet, smelling like a lily as Floyd gives him the finishing touches. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, who's going to win the election? Hard to say, Floyd. Hard to say. Uh, you don't know anybody who has a house he wants to sell, do you? Why, are you in the market, Commissioner? I may be, shortly. Well, there was a fellow in here the other day said he might want to get rid of an Oldsmobile. I can't ask my family to live in an Oldsmobile, Floyd. <laughs> what I need is a house. Why, are you getting thrown out of yours? I'm not getting thrown out. I've sold it. Is that a fact? Funny I didn't hear about it. I just told you. Bet you got a pretty good price for it, huh? A fair price. Yeah, it's a good solid house you got there, well built. Bet you got easy eight thousand for it. Nine thousand, maybe. With the garage and all, maybe ten thousand. I got a fair price. 
My problem now is to find a place to live. Yeah. Well, I got a nice little place there. Nothing fancy, you know what I mean? We could do with another bathroom. Wife's always hollering at me. But it's a roof over our heads. I'm not worrying about you, Floyd. It's me. Say, now you mention it, I hear where Otto Slesnick and his wife ain't getting along so good again. What's that to me? Well, I was passing that place the other night, and they were carrying on something fierce. I heard her call him a bum mechanic. That ain't good. Well, if you don't mind, Floyd, I'm not interested in any local gossip at the moment. Now, wait. Supposing it was to go from bad to worse. Supposing they were to bust up. Why, there'd be a house. Huh? Sure, you've got to think of those things. Wife happens to pass a remark. Man reaches for a piece of crockery. First thing you know, there's a house on the market. <laughs> Floyd, you've given me an idea. Yeah, finish me up, will you? Practically done now. Great. Of course, if you're thinking of that house of autos, it's only got five rooms. Why'd you tell me about it? I need at least seven. Well, it's only an idea. Maybe if you was to look around and sort of keep your ear to the ground, you know what I mean? Hmm. After all, life's no bed of roses. And Otto and his wife, they're not the only lovebirds in town. If there was only some way... Just because a man opens the door for his wife or carries the groceries home for her, you don't know how he treats her when he gets her there. Floyd. <laughs> how are the Thompsons getting along these days? Oh, I'm afraid that's all straightened out. Her mother finally went home. Oh, blew over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of course, um, maybe I oughtn't to say this. No? What? Well, I don't know this. I only heard... But it seems where Doc Pettibone came home at 4.30 the other morning and she put the bolt on the door and wouldn't let him in. Doc Pettibone, eh? Always wondered how he stood it. It's not a bad house, either. Well, that's only what I heard. But where there's smoke, there must be fire, you know what I mean? By George, I know where I can find out, too. Let me out of this chair, Floyd. There you are, Commissioner. Thanks, Floyd. Thank you very much. Well, if it ain't Fred Kelly. What happened, Fred? No cracks, please. Where'd you get the black eye, Fred? Ran into a door in the dark. Oh, that's too bad. Too bad. Uh, let me know if you hear anything, Floyd. Uh-huh. So long. Dr. Pettibone? Well, yes, I do most of his prescription work. <laughs> I know that, Peavy, but have you seen it? Yes, I have. As a matter of fact, Mrs. Peavy and I played bridge with the doctor and his wife last night. You did, really? Well, how did they seem? Well, they seemed fine. Why? You uh, didn't notice anything? Notice anything? I mean, you didn't feel any undercurrent there. They seemed to be getting along all right. Why, yes. Yeah. No kicking each other under the bridge table or anything? No, why? Nuts. Uh, why do you ask, Mr. Dorothy? I've got to find a house, Peavy. I've got to find one right away. Is uh, this for yourself or for a friend? Uh, for myself, naturally. For my family. We'll be out on the street in 30 days if I don't find one. Oh, dear, dear. I don't like to pry, Mr. Gildersleeve, but uh, was it trouble with the mortgage? Uh, no, it was trouble with a woman. Oh, that again. Hmm. <laughs> The woman deceived me, Peavy. They'll do it every time. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Not every time. <laughs> this one was a real estate agent. I thought if I sold my house for twelve thousand and bought another for five or six, I'd make a fair profit on the exchange. But she didn't tell me there aren't any other houses. She didn't tell me that. Have you thought of renting a house? Yeah, and so has everybody else. I've even thought of stealing a house, Peavy. That's why I asked you about Doc Pettibone. I heard things weren't so rosy there, and I thought maybe... Say, how many rooms you got in your house, Peavy? Mm -hmm. Mrs. Peavy and I are very happy where we are, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, I didn't think so. You don't know anybody who's leaving town or anything? No, I'm afraid I don't. The doctor hasn't happened to mention anybody who's on the... Uh, anxious list. Not that I can recall. Perhaps if you waited till the winter season. What? I can't, Peavy. I've got to have a house right away. I can't find one for love or money. You know, speaking of love. Yes? It's too bad you and Mrs. Ransom didn't hit it off there a while back. Why do you say that? Well, I always thought Miss Goodwin very attractive, but that place where she lives is a little small. Peavy, I told you I'm all through with that stuff. No more of it. I'll never have anything to do with a woman again as long as I... Still, that's a nice house Leela's got there. Copper plumbing throughout. Mm, nice shade trees, too. Yeah. Peavy, I wonder. What? 
I wonder if Mrs. Ransom wouldn't like to go back to Savannah. After all, she's a long way from home up here, Peepy. She could sell me her house and go down there and buy a little old plantation. Enjoy some of that southern comfort. Get some of that old corn pone. Hear those old banjos ringing. Man, I'd almost go with her. I'm so glad you dropped in, Frost Martin. Well. <laughs> I'll tell you, Leela, I've been a little worried about you lately. Oh, have you really? How nice. Yeah. When I think of you all alone in this great big house here, day after day. Well, I'm not completely alone. I have friends, you know. Oh, well, of course. Of course you have. But I sometimes ask myself, Leela, if we really know who our truest friends are. Well, I always think of you as my friend, Frock Martin. I hope you don't mind. Oh, I am very much so. Mm. Yes, indeed. You must always think of me that way, Leela. Yes. But what I mean is, well, everybody knows that a boy's best friend is his mother. A girl's, too. Well, I suppose. Yes. People should stick to their mother and their family, Leela. We mustn't forget the old folks at home. Don't you ever miss them? Well, I think about them. I think about them a lot. But sometimes I feel I'd rather think about them than be with them. <laughs> oh, that's the wrong attitude, Leela. Suddenly so interested in my folks. You never showed any interest in them when we went gay. Well, it's not your folks so much, Leela. It's not that. I'm thinking of you. I. Oh, uh, certainly. You don't realize, Leela, you're a southerner. You were born in the South. It's in your blood. Don't you hear it calling? Not at the moment. <laughs> Leela, think of it. Moonlight and honeysuckle. Soft summer breezes. Those old banjos ringing. I haven't heard a banjo in the South in 15 years. Well, you could take that one down with you. <laughs> Think of that Southern cooking, Lena. Think of it. I am thinking of it. And you're thinking of something, too. Yeah, I wonder what it is. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> oh, yes, you are. I'm thinking of you, Lena. So far from home, living all alone up here in this great big house. By the way, how many rooms has it got? <laughs> Seven. Ever have any water in the cellar? Not a drop. Remarkable. Just the same I worry about you here, Leela. Oh, that's very sweet of you, Frock Martin, to worry about me, but I don't worry. Well, you should. Such a big house for such a little girl. Seven rooms, you say? Mm, I never yeah. worry because I know that if anything should happen, if I should ever need protection, you're right next door. Uh, that's just it, Leela. I may not be next door. Frock Martin, you're not leaving time. Well... That depends. It depends on what? It depends on you. Oh, gracious. I mean, here you are living all alone in a great big house, and here I am. Gee, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> oh, Throckmorton, you're such a dear, sweet, clumsy fool. Why don't you... <laughs> Why don't you just come right out and say it? Well... Up that sit down beside me first. There. You got me all wrong, Leela. <laughs> well, I'll take my chances on that. Now, uh, what is it you wanted to say to me? Uh, Leela, why don't you go back to Savannah? Why don't I... I'd pay I... a good price for your place, Leela. I'd pay as much as it cost. You see, I gotta have a house. Oh. I sold mine. Oh. Oh, now, Leela, you're not going to cry, are you? Leela, don't cry. It was only an offer, Leela. No harm in an offer. I didn't mean to hurt you. I take it all back. Keep your house, Leela. I just thought you'd like to go back home and get some of that fried chicken. Smell some of those oleanders again. Hear those old banjos ringing. I hate banjos! <laughs> Make yourself at home, Gildy. You always do. <laughs> There's an ashtray beside you. I was just enjoying my usual after-dinner Kalac water. Care for a glass? No, thank you. Judge? Yes, Gildy? I dropped over here tonight to let you in on a good thing. If it has anything to do with mouse traps, let me out. It, no. As a matter of fact, it has to do with this rat trap you're living in here. This what? Your house. I think I may have a prospective purchaser for it. 
That is, if the price is right. Sorry, I wouldn't be interested. Oh, Judge, don't be ridiculous. This is a bona fide offer. No, not interested. Don't be a dog in the manger, Judge. What do you want to wallow around in a nine-room house for? I like it here. may not be beautiful, but it's comfortable, and I like it. I hope and expect to remain here till the day I die. But that may be years. <laughs> Look, Judge, this man is no piker. He's prepared to offer $5,000 spot cash for the whole shebang, just as she stands. I might possibly consider fourteen. Fourteen? That's two thousand more than I got. If you think your house is worth more than mine. Wait Judge. a minute, Gilly. Do you mean to tell me you've sold your house? Well, I didn't mean to tell you, Judge, but that's about the size of it. But Gilly, that house isn't yours to sell. You're only the executor. It's held in trust for Marjorie and Leroy. Well, I consulted them before I did it. Oh, you did. Well, why didn't you consult me? Well, doggone it, Horace. Every time I consult you about anything, you send me a bill. Oh, well, that's it. What am I going to do, Horace? I've sold the house and I can't find another one. Are you asking me what to do? Well, I'm asking you. <laughs> I'll bill you, so help me, I'll bill you. <laughs> well, go ahead and bill me. As your lawyer, I advise you to get that contract canceled. But how, Judge? How can I do it? Well, it'll take a good lawyer. Fortunately, you've got one. Yes. Yeah, sure. As your lawyer, I shall refer the contract to the probate judge in charge of the estate, to whom it should have been referred for approval in the first place. Good. Do that. And as the probate judge in charge of the estate, I shall declare the contract null and void. Yeah. Horace, can you do that? Watch me. <laughs> Bye, George. The law is a wonderful thing. Just a minute, please. Speaking again as your attorney, the fee for that will be $100. Marked up from 50 100 Well, I guess it's cheap at that. $100 or a chicken fricassee dinner cooked by the inimitable birdie. Yeah. Instead fricassee to include dumplings. Bye, George. Horace. Bye, golly, Gildy. You old son of a gun. You old horse thief. You old pudding You old stick in the mud. Be it ever so humble, there's, there's no, no place like home. Be it My own little bed in our own little house. <laughs> By George, I'm glad we didn't sell it. Listen to that. Rain on the roof. And here I am, snug as a bug in the rug. <laughs> hey, Unc, the water's coming through the ceiling in my room. It is? Yeah, it's dripping right in my face. Never mind, Leroy. These days, a man is lucky to have a leak over his head. <laughs> <laughs> You go to bed. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Music on this program was directed by Claude Sweet. And this is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Kraft invites you to listen in again next week at the same time for the further adventures of the Big Gilders League. It may even surprise some of you good cooks, and it's sure to surprise your family and guests to discover what marvelous new flavor interest you can add to foods with delicious craft prepared mustards. First, get Hep to Tangy Golden Craft Salad Mustard. It's something really quite special in a salad mustard. Creamy smooth, mild, yet so zestfully spiced, Kraft Salad Mustard has just what it takes to pep up a golden sauce for hot cooked vegetables, and it adds a delightful flavor tang to egg and cheese dishes. Puts new sparkle into relishes, appetizers, and sandwich spreads. And here's another great favorite, Kraft mustard with nippy horseradish added to sharpen your appetite for frankfurters and cold meat cuts and to zip up the flavor of sauces for fish. Buy both kinds for lively flavor variety. Tomorrow, ask your dealer for Kraft mustard, the nippy horseradish variety, and the tangy golden Kraft salad mustard. This is...